Well, if you believe the odds makers, Saturday's game between UCLA and Oklahoma will be no contest. Get this, Vegas has Oklahoma installed as a 30-point favorite uh, to win in Norman. And by the way, uh, speaking of the matchup, it will be at noon Oklahoma time, 10 a.m. on the West Coast. Game can be seen once again on Fox. Again, Sooners a massive favorite as far as the conditions this weekend. Well, it's going to be a lot cooler. You might remember the opener against Florida Atlantic. Temperatures were in the mid-90s, and people felt like dropping like flies who were at the game. But temperatures expected this Saturday, about 20-degree difference. Expected to get no hotter than 75, slight chance of rain, because of Tropical Storm slash Depression Gordon. But right now, they think that that system will be in eastern Oklahoma and not in Norman. So let's hope so. Let's hope that weather is not a factor at all. Before I break down the game, got to give it up uh, to Lee Morse. You know, you might remember the opener against those Owls. Hey, Morse, he was Johnny on the spot. Block punt which led to Oklahoma's second touchdown. And then when Oklahoma got the ball short time later, once again, it was Morris coming through, this time with a 65-yard touchdown reception. And as you may or may not know, um, Morris is a walk-on and a junior for the Sooners. But his status changed on Monday after practice when Lincoln Riley gathered the team together and he said to the team, Morris, he's going to pay for your lunch because he is now on scholarship. <laughs> Team erupted. Of course, uh, Morris was ecstatic. He had no idea that that announcement was coming. And, and by the way, Morris never had any inclination of transferring anywhere else. He always wanted to be a Sooner, so good for him. Uh, Lee Morris, no longer a walk-on for Oklahoma. He's now on full scholarship. Well-deserved. And while we stay on the good news subject with players for OU, Curtis Bolton was named Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week. And why not? The linebacker had uh, six solo tackles. Also uh, recovered that uh, blocked punt from Lee Morse that led to Oklahoma's second touchdown. So congrats to the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week. That's uh, Curtis Bolton. Now, the news wasn't all peaches and cream for the Crimson and Cream, and that's because of Addison Gumsh. You might have heard uh, the day before the Florida Atlantic game, I mean, bless his heart, a non-contact um, knee injury that uh, wiped out his entire 2018 season. But the news doesn't stop there with Gumps, and no hard feelings at all between Gumps and Lincoln Riley. Uh, Gumps has decided to transfer um, for family reasons. Hate to see him go and wish nothing but the best for Addison Gumps, but again, transferring uh, due to uh, family reasons. Well, for the Sooners, yes, a massive favor to defeat UCLA. The Bruins stumbled out of the gates of the Rose Bowl last Saturday with a loss to Luke Fickle and the Cincinnati Bearcats. Chip Kelly, of course, a big-time college football coach. We saw that at Oregon um, during his time in Eugene, uh, winning a heck of a lot more than losing and, of course, winning Pac-12 championships. But, you know, after his stint with the Philadelphia Eagles and San Francisco 49ers, Kelly back in the uh, college ranks. And, again, it was a big-time struggle for UCLA, especially offensively last week against those Bearcats. For the Sooners, they're in that position where, you know, on one end, you know, you love to be where OU's at. I mean, going from number seven in the AP poll last week to number six this week, you're more than a four touchdown favorite. You're playing at home. You know, Lane Kiffin, the Florida Atlantic coach, thinks that your team, the Sooners, should be in the college football playoff based upon what he saw uh, this past week. You got everybody, you know, giving you absolute praise. The only opponent that Oklahoma will be facing this week, in my opinion, is not UCLA. It's not any team in particular. What they're going to be facing is that subject called overconfidence and not biting into it. That's the one thing that slows down intensity. That's the one thing that takes away focus, and that's usually a recipe for upsets or for a game to be a lot more competitive than it needs to be. Overconfidence. Big thing for the Sooners. Hopefully they haven't been reading their press clippings. Hopefully they haven't been buying into, well, you're going to be in the college football playoff come late December. You know, it is way too early to be thinking about that. There are still 11 games to go. 
treat UCLA, you know, with respect. The big thing is, yes, Florida Atlantic, um, not as good as what we thought, and OU played about as crisp of a first period as I've seen for a season opener ever. And I've been watching OU football since the early 1980s, giving away my age a little bit. But here's the bottom line. The Sooners can't buy into the hype, okay? Take it one game at a time. I know that's cliche-ish. I know that sounds old-fashioned, but it really is the gospel anytime you approach a college football season, okay? You want to continue that climb toward getting in a position for the playoff? You know, let that part take care of itself. Rankings right now don't mean a whole hell of a lot, okay? UCLA is still a Power 5 school, still a big name, and they still have athletes, okay? And I'm sure the Bruins will be ready to play this Saturday. I'm sure Chip Kelly this week got their undivided attention. I know the spread says 30, but, you know, don't be surprised if this is not a 63-14 to 14 type game. I'm not expecting a close game, but I'm not expecting um, a 50-type point spread, okay, at game's end. I think UCLA will play with determination, and I think um, defensively um, they could make things a little bit hard for the Sooners. Now, let's go ahead and um, look at the matchup first as far as UCLA's offense. And just like last week when OU played Ford Atlantic, uh, we still uh, don't know who the quarterback's going to be, but I won't know until about game time. Remember last week? Um, we didn't know until just moments before the kickoff that it was going to be Chris Robinson, the former OU quarterback, that was going to go against the Sooners. Well, for UCLA, we don't know um, who will be the quarterback. And that's because Wilton Spate, the former uh, Michigan Wolverine, uh, got the start last week. But a late second quarter injury to his back has now created a little bit of doubt as far as if he will even be available uh, for this Saturday to play, let alone start. Um, Spate is questionable with uh, sore back issues. If he doesn't go, I'd be willing to bet you a dollar to a donut that it will be the uh, true freshman, the guy that played in Las Vegas last year. That is Dorian Thompson Robinson. One heck of an athlete. He's got a terrific arm. Obviously, lacks big-time experience, big-time raw. And last week, you saw a little bit of that um, inexperience. He got sacked four times, certainly not his fault, but um, is accountable for that fumble that led to an instant safety. Bruins, by the way, do have another option at QB, a guy that played five games last year, now a sophomore, that is Devin Monster. But again, he didn't play much in 2017. The Bruins ground attack uh, last week, just plain average, if not below average, just about 140 yards rushing, and half of that came off one run from the dynamic freshman in Kashmir Allen. He'll probably get more touches this week. He had over 100 yards rushing a week ago in the loss to Cincy, um, tested just five times. I would say... Um, because of his speed, probably will get more action this week. Last week, even though Bolo all around for me uh, scored a touchdown, disappointing day, though. Nine carries, only 13 yards, and Josh Kelly is an option in the backfield. The receivers for the Bruins, well, they got Theo Howard, who had five catches a week ago. One of the better tight ends in the country, at least physically, um, Caleb Wilson. He had four catches last week. Expect him to be used more in this matchup with the Sooners. But the offensive line for UCLA, this is a bad matchup for them. They had their hands full with the Bearcats last week. Cincinnati had four sacks in the ball game, and you know this Bruin offensive line only returned at two of five starters from a year ago. Again, an inexperienced offensive line and a, a unit that I think is going to have their hands full against an Oklahoma defensive line. Granted, it was against Florida Atlantic, but coming off a solid game, especially uh, Ronnie Perkins, the freshman. Now, there's a big reason why I think that 30-point spread is a bit inflated. Because I think UCLA's defense is good, okay? Um, they only gave up 304 yards last week against the Bearcats despite uh, losing by nine points. Uh, the Bruins' secondary can play. Darius Pickett last week, the safety had um, 15 tackles, nine of them were solo. And uh, the tandem of um, Kashan Lucier South as well as Jalen Phillips, I thought, got terrific outside pressure. The problem UCLA is going to have in this game is that Oklahoma, with the backfield that they've got, of course, highlighted by Rodney Anderson, and that veteran offensive line should be able to run down the Bruins' throat. The Bruins last year uh, were pathetic against the run, giving up about 290 yards on the ground per game. Last week, about 200 yards per game is what they gave up, and the big reason why Cincinnati won that game at the Rose Bowl last Saturday. I think the formula should be not that dissimilar from what we saw last week against the Owls. That is, make the ground game your foundation. I mean, Rodney Anderson, you know, only touched the ball five times last week. But then again, that's all you needed him to on a day that was relatively easy breezy for the Crimson and Cream. 
Still got his 100 yards. He'll get the ball more than five times this week, and he'll be catching the ball out of the uh, backfield as well. So the ground game highlighted by Anderson. Of course, you see a little bit of Cameron Sutton as well. Look for the Sooners to have their way on the ground and set everything else up for Kyler Murray and the passing attack. And we saw, of course, last week Oklahoma with big playability with Hollywood Brown. And we got to see a little bit, by the way, of Nick Basquin as well, who, of course, missed all of last year due to injury. So I would expect the Sooners not necessarily to have a 63-point performance, but I would still expect them to control the contest. Remember, last week UCLA only had the ball 25 minutes in their loss to the Bearcats. My final thoughts on this game, I think this is going to be a heck of a matchup between Oklahoma and UCLA and could come down to the end. Next year when these teams play at the Rose Bowl and UCLA gets the return game in California. This matchup, this Saturday, September the 8th, uh -uh, not going to be drama in this one. I think Oklahoma will be focused, and I think that they will decide this game early. I'm not picking them to cover the spread because I do think UCLA's defense will do everything that they can to make sure that the score doesn't get out of hand. But still, it's going to be Oklahoma's day. I've got 38 to 10 Oklahoma winning, but not covering that 30. Don't forget my three picks, me against the coin. That's coming your way uh, later this week on this very webpage. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. You won't regret it. And then Saturday, um, late Saturday afternoon, I'll have my post game of the Sooners and the Bruins. Boomer Sooner.